Law is one of the most thought out, badass anime characters of all time. And every action he takes, he's already planned five steps ahead into how it will lead him towards his final goal. As such, he left his crew on Zoe, predicting that to be their eventual meetup point after the stars align on the rest of his plan that dare not fail. He then accomplished a feat securing him a position as a Shishibukai, which would eventually lead him to the whereabouts of Caesar Clown, a stepping stone necessary to his greater plan, where he acted as a double agent to gain Caesar to trust him and to gain leverage against Doflamingo to completely destroy him, which was all just a small piece of his eventual strategy to wipe out Kaido, the King of the Beasts, and one of the four emperors. It's not like one accomplishment led to the next. Kaido was his target at ground zero. When he requested Luffy to join his alliance, the target was the emperor immediately, not Dolphy. This is truly fascinating because from what we've seen from Law's backstory, he has every reason to want to annihilate Doflamingo, but seemingly no real gripe with Kaido. Why then did his proposed alliance with the Straw Hats target Kaido? Obviously there has to be some connection between our surgeon friend and the Beast King, likely taking place post Don Quixote. And that's what piqued my interest to research the hell out of their alleged relationship more than Sanji researched that new porno cryptocurrency that's going around, which is of course totally legit, just like all the other cryptocurrencies. I came up with some crap that I never really expected to find when heading in, and I mostly do analytical or satirical videos, but I feel like if I can pair analysis with theory, I can do a pretty decent job compared to your so-called theory videos that try to predict what new form Luffy's gonna get in the next chapter. I present you with the ultimate outcome of the Kaido Law Wano Climax that we'll be seeing unfurl over the next three years at least of the One Piece narrative. As we know, there are multiple characters in the story where either their names or actions are based off prominent figures in history, and almost all of them result in an interesting correlation between fact and fiction. Some are really obvious, like how Capone Beige is based off Al Capone, Jewelry Bonnie is based off Anne Bonnie, Blackbeard Teach is based off the actual Blackbeard Thatch, and so on. But whenever we have a correlation that's an obvious one, the playout is also obvious, Capone being a gangster and Bonnie being a thief, and with Blackbeard being a major league villain that quickly rose through the ranks of the most dangerous of enemies, just like his real life counterpart, as well as tons more like Whitebeard Kid and L and Django and all those guys. There's some really deep shizzle buried here in the Law Kaido Doflamingo scenario that Oda's been subconsciously teasing at, I believe, and it's time to be unearthed. The Emperor Kaido is based off the Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte. And before you berate me on how Napoleon was a midget and Kaido is like a roided out Hulk, I'll have you know that while Napoleon was alive, his enemies all thought him to be a giant monster, and it's only in retrospect and in history that we know he's actually a little dude. Also, you try to tell me that it isn't perfect One Piece humor that Kaido is actually this little teeny guy, and it's his devil fruit that makes him the king of the beasts. I have a theory why I believe his ability will give him many mythical beast forms, kind of like Chopper, but like mega Chopper, but that's for another day. The main reasoning behind me believing him to be Napoleon that I would like to prove to you is on two levels. Firstly, his actions. When Law mentioned Kaido's name to Kinemon and Momonosuke on Punk Hazard, they were positively terrified. And we know Momo is next in line to the Shogun, who is no longer in power. The way Napoleon was crowned emperor was by taking over the royal family, and he ruled with an iron fist that made him feared by his own people. So too, I believe Kaido is currently sitting as the Shogun of Wano, as as well as one of the four emperors ruling with an iron vice of terror. Especially because we know Wano's kind of his whereabouts that just cements the deal and explains the fear expressed by Kinemon and why Mono Momo got, screw that, Momo is on the run. So that's where I believe the major clash will be against Kaido and I will get to that later. The second level basing him as Napoleon needs a bit more rounded information as to why he is where he is and what will become of him. This one's pretty straightforward but Dresser and the Don Quixote family represents the Spanish Empire, and that's not a stretch in the slightest. Doflamingo, Don Quixote, Pica, Diamante, Corazon, and Treble are all Spanish names, as is the dances, the music, and the dresses of the Dressrosa nation. It's all Spain-based, and as we know, Spain was an allied force of the French under the reign of 
The Emperor Napoleon, just like Doflamingo, was supplying Kaido with an artificial double fruit army in the Black Market Underworld. The alliance between the Straw Hat Pirates and the Hard Pirates, being the adversaries of the French and Spanish, represent the allied British forces which opposed the French and Spanish, and they had two victories against them. Both of these victories were naval battles. One smaller victory was in Spain, or Dressarasa, according to this theory, and that battle was called the Battle of Trafalgar. And the second major victory against the French was where Napoleon finally tasted a major defeat in the legendary Battle of Waterloo. Law's full name is Trafalgar D. Water Law. Yeah, I'm gonna let that sink in for a moment, so while we're waiting, feel free to click that subscribe button, thanks. Trafalgar D. Water Law represents those two victories against the Beast King, the first blow against Kaido and Dressarasa, being the Clash of Trafalgar, and the second being their final battle, likely in Wano representing the Battle of Waterloo, hence Water Law. And the key player in this entire strategy leading up to this defeat is Trafalgar D. Water Law. I believe that to be the main purpose of Law's role in the entire One Piece narrative. He will serve as the bane to Kaido. And I have another theory as to why and how Law will die that I don't really want to get into right now, but he will be the climax of the Kaido saga, which starts all the way back in Punk Hazard. In most theories, you can't call them facts or whatever because they really aren't. They're theories. But until this point, I'm so certain that what I'm saying is at least mostly accurate because I generally find that if something so beautifully clicks together so perfectly, it's almost always truth, at least on some level. So until here is theory bordering on fact with almost no outside speculation even due to the soundness of how One Piece has been representing history. But I believe there are many more hidden messages within the representations of Kaido and law as far as the Napoleonic War. For example, in the Battle of Waterloo, which I believe represents the climax of the entire Wano Kaido saga, there were many traitors among the French that greatly caused their defeat. The larger French forces were defeated because of this backstabbing treachery. And it would not be amiss to say that the samurai who represent the oppressed French will have an uprising allying with the Straw Hat Heart Alliance, which as I've mentioned represents the British allies. But furthermore, I believe Oda will place great stress upon this betrayal because Napoleon was fooled by this treachery. He thought those who betrayed him to be his loyal soldiers and comrades, whereas Kaido knows that the samurais despise him. He's going to get betrayed by someone far closer to his heart and by someone he trusts deeply that will lead him to his demise and I believe we already know who that someone is that will betray him I believe this someone has already showed his loyalty full well over the last three years to gain his trust the third entry to the straw hat heart alliance will be someone from the inside that allied with law three years earlier and used all that time to build a powerful relationship up to the climax of the Waterloo battle and I'm talking about X Drake a supernova that already before the time skip was seen to be working on buddying up with the big bad Kaido, and from what we've seen thus far in the New World, his position remains as Kaido's subordinate. From what we've seen so far, not a single supernova is willing to give up on their own individual dreams to shackle themselves to the dreams of a Yonko, as we've seen it with Beige, and X Drake will be no different. I believe Drake's been covertly planning the dethronement of Kaido far before the New World adventure, and his fealty and loyalty, I believe, was already revealed from the backstory he was given. This guy was an ex-marine that left the marines with good intentions because he did not like the direction the world government was following. He ain't becoming some petty evil henchman guy. He's aiming to make a positive difference in the universe, not team up with a tyrant to the extent that he may even share bonds with the revolutionary army being that he deserted similarly to Kuzan and quite frankly, he wears very similar attire, but that's for another day. Knowing Law and his role to play in the story, this covert Kaido operation was all orchestrated by him long ago. If you remember, Law said an odd, inconsequential comment to X Drake in the Shabari Archipelago. How many people have you killed? While I initially wrote that off as Law trying to show off how cool he was, it's far more likely that a calculated, badass, stoic character, as he's later revealed to be, was asking Drake, so does Kaido trust you yet? How many people have you killed? How was those missions he was sending you on? Every twist and turn we've taken in the new world since Punk Hazard regarding Kaido perfectly matches the Napoleonic War. From the positioning of his Wano stronghold to the relationship with Dressrosa, and now aside from even the D, Law's full name, as well as the actions he's taking and the alliances he's forming is more than just vague foreshadowing. The ultimate climax of Wano, I believe, will be Luffy's crew, Law's crew, and the samurai rebels against Kaido's beast 
army, with X Drake changing the tide of the battle with a completely unpredictable backstab. Law's past with Kaido will be revealed, and Luffy will deliver the finishing blow, all according to Law's master multi year plan. And I have a sad feeling that since this is the climax Law was built for, I can see him unfortunately dying, saving the day, or dying early in the next saga, which I will talk about in just a moment. But I can see him dying and trusting his legacy to Luffy with the samurai and heart pirates joining Luffy's fleet. This is where they finally finish the first major saga since their entry into the new world, where it's time to ally up with Marco and the Whitebeard remnants to walk into the second major saga that will star Blackbeard, Shanks, and the Revolutionary Army. I say they'll all overlap because we're entering a different stretch of the series, where the D in Blackbeard's name will hold a lot more meaning than it did until now. I wanted to upload this smaller theory. <laughs> smaller theory. First, not that it's a small theory, but by comparison, this is just a speck compared to the theory I'm working on that explains and ties together the entire climax of the One Piece series that Oda envisioned from the get-go. I have a clarity on how the Will of D, the Void Century, and the One Piece itself are all not only tied into the story, but how they're all connected to each other and what they all are. Again, I mainly do analysis and satire videos, but now and again, I'm down to drop a theory bomb if I feel like I have something worth saying. I felt like this was worth saying, quite frankly, and I believe that the next one is head and shoulders above this one. Within the next few days, you can expect a pretty awesome, if I do say so myself, Katakuri video that will cover the brilliance of his character until this point and what will be his future. <laughs> I wanted to end this video saying how I feel like Blackbeard staring down upon Marie Ford as I descend upon the One Piece community. But that's way too cringy and pretentious to end the video. So, guys, this is basically my first One Piece lore focused video. My first of many, hopefully, and I'm planning to make waves as the weirdest, badass One Piece YouTuber the internet scene. Okay, aside from maybe teching, he covers freaking everything. Oh, and Roger, that guy has a passion I could never muster. All the love to those guys. But I'm joining the One Piece YouTube game. There will be One Piece content on this channel. Feel free to like and subscribe. I love all of you. Stay weird, fam.